In the early 1970s, the skies of the North Atlantic were traversed by an impressive state-of-the-art ship. A supersonic Soviet bomber with a single goal, to hunt down and destroy U.S. aircraft carriers. The Sukhoi T-4 Sokka was the Soviet Union's response to Western advances in bomber aircraft. Do you have a supersonic unit? Then we'll make a machine capable of destroying not only your planes, but also your ships. The prognosis was not at all favorable for NATO, the problem is that the prototype never left the testing stage. In this video we will cover in detail the impressive qualities of the T-4 and the reasons why it was never able to enter service. How did one of the most impressive machines built by the Kremlin end up being a museum piece? We'll tell you all about it in this new installment of Military Aviation. The fierce technological competition that took place during the Cold War pushed the military powers to constantly innovate, but also to invest a large part of their resources in espionage. You have to be aware of what happens on the other side. In the late 1960s, Soviet leaders received some discouraging news. The United States had a new supersonic ship that completely surpassed all its units. The XB-70 Valkyrie. The Soviet Ministry of Defense could not sit idly by while its enemies advanced, so two programs were immediately launched to counter this new threat. One of the projects sought to produce an interceptor capable of reaching a speed of Mach 3, which would allow it to destroy the new American bomber. This resulted in one of the most iconic ships of the Cold War, the MiG-25. The other project was completely confidential. It was a supersonic bomber with features comparable to those of its western counterpart, but with a more specific tactical objective, to destroy the interoceanic transport of American ships. The Soviet Union wanted an aircraft carrier hunter. Tupolev, Sikhoi and Yakovlev companies applied to the project and presented various prototypes that met the requirements of the Ministry of Defense. In this close competition, Tupolev seemed to have a certain advantage. The company had been in charge of producing the Soviet Union's tactical bombers for years. And surely you know several of its products, 2160, 222. The list is endless, but at that time the army was looking for something innovative. Sukhoi is a company known for carrying out state-of-the-art aeronautical projects, always taking design risks, and this is why it won the competition despite its lack of bomber credentials. The requirements of the Soviet Union were clear. The ship had to be able to fly at Mach 3 and carry anti-ship missiles powerful enough to destroy aircraft carriers. No more no less. Initially, the model was titled Project 100, and it was carried out under almost hermetic secrecy. After several months of work, Sukhoi presented a model 44 meters long, with a wingspan of 22 meters and 11.2 meters high. It was the first and only incarnation of the T-4 Satka. The T-4 was designed as a two-seater aircraft, with the pilot and co-pilot sitting in tandem. The cockpit layout was striking, more similar to that of a fighter than a bomber, with a single control located in the center of the cockpit. Behind the cockpit were experimental-type electronic equipment, automatic navigation and bombing systems still used on modern bombers. Its design had delta-shaped wings and canard-type front wings, designed to improve stability at low speeds and at the time of final approach to the runway during descent. This beast would be powered by four large thrust turbojets installed together under the center fuselage of the ship. This same engine would later be used in the Tu-160, a model that became the standard for Soviet bombers. When flying at Mach 3, the same rules do not apply as in conventional flights, aluminum is not able to resist the heat generated by the impressive speed. Options had to be found to build an airframe that could withstand these extreme conditions. Do you remember that we talked about the experimental eagerness that Sukhoi always showed? Well, that was part of the problem. The prototype was built with extremely expensive experimental materials such as titanium and stainless steel. 
Everything was joined with a special welding system that did not allow seeing the joints or rivets, which would allow air to penetrate efficiently. The T-4 was the first Russian aircraft to implement the digital fly-by-wire command system. Today that system is considered the norm for the manufacture of fighter and commercial transport aircraft, but at the time it was a novelty. Another interesting quality is that a supporting hydraulic control system was designed to improve the safety of the aircraft. The nose could be lowered to facilitate visibility during takeoff and landing, just like the Concords. To give you a concrete idea of how innovative this plane was, it is estimated that there are some 600 patents directly related to the design of the T-4. That is, 600 original parts that were designed for the first time to bring the bomber of the future to life. Once the first prototype called 101 was completed, it was time to test it. But before continuing, do you think the Soviet Union should have resorted to Tupolev's experience and not Sukhoi's innovation? The first flight occurred on August 22, 1972, by the famous test pilot Vladimir Ilyushin. What seemed like a simple trial lasted for two years, until January 1974. In that period the T-4 flew only 10 times, with a total of 10 hours and 20 minutes of tests. It is believed to have reached Mach 1.3 supersonic speed at an altitude of 12,000 meters, using four Kolsov RD-36-41 engines. The project stipulated reaching a speed of Mach 3 but was cancelled before achieving full performance of the ship. But, why did the Soviet Union put an end to one of its most ambitious projects? Basically, it was a prototype that used elements that were too expensive. The body was mostly titanium and this was an unprecedented expense for a bomber, making mass production impossible. Another reason was the advancement of intercontinental ballistic missiles such as the R-36M, which have greater precision and capacity than the T-4 bomber could provide, and all at an infinitely lower operating cost. All this put an end to the project. Only one T-4 survived to this day, Test Aircraft 101. It is currently on display at the Central Museum of the Russian Air Force in Menino, a few kilometers from Moscow. If one day you find yourself visiting the Russian capital, you can see in person this ambitious project that promised to be the fear of aircraft carriers, but ended up gathering dust in the corridors of a museum. If you like this content, we invite you to subscribe to the channel and activate notifications. In the pinned comment and description you can also find links to other videos. Thank you for joining us until the end and we'll meet again in the next deliveries of military aviation.